And we're going to uh, have a moment of reflection for council and for the audience. Thank you. I'm going to I have the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'm going to ask Henry Showalter, who would lead us in the Vice Mayor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic over which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adjustments? I have no adjustments at this point. Okay. Uh, we have a public hearing tonight, a conditional use permit request for a commercial garage in the B3 General Business District at 30 Bower Street, and I believe it's also 45 Clearview. Is that kind of what we're looking at? Okay. By George Gray. Is there anyone here that would like to address this issue? I've got Okay. These are, uh, the same work with the Commission. Uh, you share if you want. <laughs> They're kind of big. I have eight, so. Thank you very much. I've already seen this. Yeah. Oh, you got a copy? That's the, uh, site plan to work out with the condition and use permit with uh, I'm sorry, your, your name? Gary, sorry. Gary. Right. Very good. Uh, for our shop that we're trying to get a permit for. And we had uh, the condition and use, we came up with 14, I think, for the permit. Do you have any, any questions? Or, You didn't have any problems with it being reviewed in 12 months? Uh, no, I don't. The, uh, I'm George, by the way. Okay. The uh, Planning Commission uh, worked out, I think, 14 different um, conditions that, that we totally agreed with. I mean, we could have probably written those conditions ourselves because everything on them, I think, we plan on doing anything. So, their design and aimed at keeping the character of the neighborhood um, and not working late nights and, and things like that that are pretty much yeah. pretty much what you would expect. Because there is residential there and, and we live right by it, so uh, it's it's uh, it's a good set of, of circumstances for us because I mean we we plan on doing everything that's listed there anyhow. So uh, and the year a year from now review we feel comfortable with that we're not gonna do anything different. Our goal is to make it a very attractive, nice looking place. So we have work to do, and this is what it's going to look like. Obviously, if you can buy there, we have green spaces to grow. We've got over we've got those we've got, you know, land landscaping work to do, pavement to put in. So um, this is a plan, and this is what it will look like when we get finished with it. So um, it doesn't look exactly like that right now, but it will. Thank you. Can I ask a question, Mr. Gray, since it's folks in here? Certainly. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gray had read the history of, of your request uh, with the BZA, the uh, BZA last year, and then the Planning Commission's deliberations, and they supported your request 8 to 0, which was good. I just had a simple question for you. Sure. Have the four uninspected vehicles and RV been moved? No, the RV, uh, we have an issue with the title on the RV. We brought that up from Mississippi with us. Uh, it's perfectly legal and tagged in Mississippi. When we went to tag it here, um, that's the, we've had that for 15 years, I guess, almost 20 years, 15 years, then that's in 98. And when we went to get a title here, we bought, I bought that vehicle in Mississippi in 2000. No. Was it? Yeah, 2021, 2001, something like that. And, it was a salvage vehicle. Now, in the state of Mississippi, you could rebuild them. And we rebuilt it. There's two different things that happened there. We ultimately rebuilt it to the point where Mississippi issues a standard title, not a rebuilt title. Mm -hmm. When we went to tag a title, <laughs> Virginia's a whole lot different. 
the paperwork is at Richmond. They can't do it locally. They have to go to Richmond. So that's all been sent to Richmond. And from what I, I got from the DMV, they have to research it. They have to determine if it's fixed properly, yada, yada, yada. So we can't really drive it much on the street. Okay. But we, we plan on getting it out of there. And the trailer is a licensed legal trailer. So I'm just kidding, you know, I don't think there's any closes. I can't, we can't park it there. Although we will be moving it because it's sitting right now where the parking area is supposed to be. Yeah, it'll have to be. So it'll have to be moved. So we're looking for some place to, you know. But the move. RV is your personal vehicle. Yeah, those are our personal. Every vehicle there is our personal vehicle. <laughs> Um, we're, we're, we've gotten rid of one, um, two, two, and you know we, we're just kind of we're hobbyists. I mean, all this we started out as hobbyists, so you know we pick up a car, pull around with it, and sell it, take parts off it, things like that. But um, it changed a couple of months ago when my son decided to, that he no longer had a job, and now we're trying to now he wants to be a, a, a business. So, but all the vehicles that are there will be gone. Um, that's part of our agreement with the, with the planning commission was that we have no intention of having a bunch car of lot, yeah. a car lot or anything like that. Right. And the unrestricted vehicles, have, are they still there? Yeah. There is one, there's one there 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 there. We, yeah. There's one vehicle there that we have under car cover because um, way back when um, the zoning board said, you know, you, you need to keep it covered if it's not. There's one vehicle there that we won't be getting rid of right away because it's going to be his daily driver. It doesn't have an engine in it. He has to put the engine in it, and get it put back together so he can drive it. So other than that, everything will be gone. Okay. And the other one, there's one other vehicle. That, it's a race piece car. of a vehicle. Mm -hmm. There's a body that's a full <coughs> race body. It's on a little trailer. And that, uh, when we get all the spare parts that are in our, our trailer now out of it, then that's going to go in the trailer, so that will be gone. So the only thing that will be there is the trailer RV. Yeah, trailer RV. So, okay. We can't yeah. drive RV. Okay. Thank you very much. We have to get that. It's just the way Virginia works. I have no idea how long it's been. It's been a month now. I don't have any okay. idea how long it's been. Okay. Can I ask something, Mr. Yes. Certainly. Okay. Uh, you told the Planning Commission that you were going to move those cars, too. So yeah, yeah. I need a date. When you oh. going to move them? Well, the cars are out. They're good. There's the, the silver car with the carver's wheel in there, and it's okay. going to go in the ship. It's going to be inside. Okay. It's moving inside next yeah. week. Okay. So it's left outside now. It's next to the shop. I've got another car in there now. And i got to get it finished this week, and then it goes in. Okay. And if the race car, if we get another house, <coughs> we get the <coughs> junk that we, that we have. The miscellaneous, my mover said, we have a lot of miscellaneous. Said, what do you mean miscellaneous? He said, junk. Yeah. Yeah. Half the trailer's full of that. We got to get and get out of there and make room for the, the race car to go in. It. So um, by the end of the month, okay. we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll okay. commit to having it cleared and everything out of there by the end of the month. As long as we get a tag for the RV. Yeah. 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 So we can. Okay. Any questions? Any any comments from the neighbor? Yeah. I'm, that's next on the agenda. Okay. I, I notice there's some other people. Some. Neighbors here, uh, anyone else would like to speak on this? If you'll use your name and address, and uh, <coughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't need to come all the way up front. Bruce, I think you had your hand up first. Bruce Moses, I'm one of, uh, I own five properties that be affected on this street. Just want to point out a couple of things. One of them, that there's no cul-de-sac at the end of this street, and it's a very narrow street. The street's half paved. So we're going to add another business on this street. Is the town planning on uh, coming and upgrading and uh, widening the rest of this street for this extra traffic? Uh, second question is, I uh, would like to know what kind of, it sounds like it's going to be a um, salvage vehicle repair shop. Yeah, I'd like to know what type of business they plan on putting in there, you know, how many cars. And it's it's going to be a high-end race shop, and there's not going to be any traffic. Uh, the doors will probably be locked during the day because I can't be disturbed when I'm working. And there's also going to be an internet-based business that I'm running out of there. The customers I'm dealing with have cars that are anywhere from thirty to $60,000, so they won't be outside because they're race cars and they have no windows, so you cannot put them outside. And they won't, they won't store their trailers there. Because I'm not going to be responsible for a trailer that's parked on my property. It's just too many people get broken into and trailers stolen. It's just not worth it. I hear you loud and clear, but it sounds like it's a circus already. <laughs> that's not true. Uh, 
Yeah, you have it's, not all town yet. It's, it's not a bill. It's not a business yet. I can't bring business in there to work on cars until I have a permit. I don't come here too often to speak. Very often, too often, and I'm here tonight because I'm really concerned. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Bruce. Jack. Jack Trump, I'm on the Jordan property for uh, 5530 Drive, 6530 Drive. I was told at the first meeting we had here there would be a fence, nice fence put up between us and that. It has not been. This Mr. Gary right here is one who stood up and said there would be one. He would see that it was built. It has been, nothing been done. All I get is uh, debris from the vehicles. I think it's a crying shame to bring down the junkyard on the Radford Road. You realize the cars Thank I look at are probably worth as much as the house you have. I'm in the car I'm business. In, I'm I know business. what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm in the car business. Anyone else to uh, address I'd like to address that fence thing he just talked about. Just there is a six and a half to seven foot privacy hedge running down the lot line. It's kind of silly to expect me to build a six foot fence next to a seven foot shrub. That is absolutely, you can't look through it, you can't see through it. It's an effective privacy screen. It's a privacy hedge. Uh, Thank you. Any other questions from council? Any other comments? I'm going to close the public hearing. We move on to our consent agenda. Before we do that, I will call uh, your attention and council's attention to the fruit basket that is sitting over next to uh, the wall there. It is from a uh, a very appreciative citizen of Christiansburg, and I'm going to I'm going to read this to you. It's to the town council, dear Mayor Michael, council and staff. Since the founding in 1866, the Industrial Institute by the Freedmen's Bureau until today, the Christiansburg Community Center continues to serve those in the community with their with their needs. Founded by Captain William Charles Schaefer. I came to Christiansburg in 1953 and I became a member of Schaefer Baptist Church. I have tried to be a part of the, of the center from 1953 to 2016. Thank you for the gift you and, and council and staff have made to the community center to complete the roof. May God, may God continue to bless you in, in the future as he has done in the past. <coughs> Nanny B. Harrison and the late John T. Harrison. Very good. Now, on the consent agenda, we have a uh, meeting minutes of, April, of August 23rd and a resolution which a copy of is in front of you and was also into your packet uh, in recognition to help, uh, of help save the next girl month, which I believe we do in October. And we can do them one at a time or separately or put them together. I would move that we approve the consent agenda, both the uh, A and B sections, as I mentioned. Second. Right. Got a motion and a second? Madam Clark? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Sherlock? Aye. Councilman Sherlock? Aye. Councilman Sherlock? Aye. 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 I believe the uh, public, the vote on public hearing will be the 27th. That was presented tonight. So we will vote on your on your request on the twenty seventh. Thank you. <clears throat> citizens comments. This is the, the section that we open up for citizens to come forward and speak. Tell us anything that's on their mind. Uh, anything you'd like to address council. We ask that you uh, give your name and address. If you would like to come to the podium, that's fine. If not, if you can, if you want to stand at your seat, that's fine also. Here you now, I'll close citizens' comments. Introdu under introductions and presentations, Director of Public Relations is Melissa Powell to report on the Public Relations Department. Ms. Melissa? Pull up my presentation. of this presentation will be focused um, from May onward. 
Um, I'll, I'll go through who we are, what we do, specifically our purpose, um, and then focus a little bit on results, both from media coverage, social media, and then some new programs we've been led. So, as you know, uh, our team is composed of me and Allison Long. Uh, we're a small team. Allison started full-time in July 2012 after being part-time for a few months, and as I just mentioned, I joined the team in May of this year. Uh, if I had to put our purpose into one word, I'd say that it's storytelling. Um, why a public relations department is important, uh, there are several reasons. The most obvious that, that many of you probably think about the most is keeping residents informed. Uh, that can be anything from you know, a, a small street closure so that people aren't caught off guard when they try to pull into their driveway at night, or um, you know, an active emergency situation. So building that base um, and ways and means to communicate with as many community members as we can. Um, but storytelling can go, can go further. It can, it can move into areas like economic development, um, something I call placemaking, and that's kind of presenting an identity of the town of Christiansburg so that when people, um, prospective residents or businesses or organizations <coughs> with our website or social media, um, how we're covered in the news media, they, they kind of see our identity, they can understand what's important to us and, and how we're perceived by the larger region. Um, a few things, a few adjectives I would use to describe our department um, in the short time I've been here is that we're, we're very effective. Um, we, we get the word out however we need to get out so that we can reach the most people. Um, we're timely and that's, you know, if, if a citizen comes to us with a concern, a question, a complaint or if a news a news media organization a journalist comes to us with requests for information those are things that we prioritize and and we try to get back to them as quickly as we can and we're proactive we're not just sitting around waiting for those questions to come in um, we're in communication with with the news media with with the public uh, on, a, on a daily basis and and, and every week um, we're pitching stories that are personalized to reporters um, and, and going out with press releases um, we're transparent, we're consistent, we're approachable. These are all things, you know, that we really strive to be so that people know that they can come to us for this information. So what we do specifically. Um, a lot of these things you guys know about, so I won't talk in great detail, and, and several of them are mentioned in later slides, so I'll just touch on them briefly here. But um, again, the obvious thing is media outreach and press releases. Um, but beyond that, on, on the staff side, um, something that's really important to me, and this comes largely from my background in, in agency PR, is making sure that when I'm putting a spokesperson forward for an interview, they know what they're getting into. And that's not meant to be offensive to them. I know that they're the expert, and that's why I'm putting them forward. But I want them to feel comfortable. I want them to know the background of how this, this interview came about, um, what kind of questions may be asked. And then I want to sit in with them if I can, or um, you know, if they want me there. So that if there's a question that comes up and they don't know the answer, I'm there to kind of interject and say, we can get, we can confirm that information for you and get back to you, and then I know to follow up with the reporter. Um, and then I don't leave them hanging. I let them know what happened. And you guys see a lot of those coverage recaps that I send to you um, quite frequently. But also, if it was a, if it was a piece that I worked really closely one-on-one -on -one with somebody, I might go back to them and provide additional feedback, um, a separate email or in person. Um, obviously, the town website. Social media, big parts of our jobs, notify me, which is um, <coughs> community members can sign up to receive alerts when we post things on the website. Um, and citizens alert, which I'll go over later, but that's our new code red, our new emergency alert system. So we're responsible for sending out those alerts. <coughs> um, all external publications, our newsletter that goes in the utility bill every two months, um, the welcome guide, other things that are <coughs> distributed to the public. <coughs> FOIA, I serve as the FOIA officer for the town, so when those requests come in, you know, obviously that's a very important um, operation of, of a government organization and several other organizations, but getting that information to the public um, and to the news media when they request it. And then some, some internal things, the internet is a new topic that I'll discuss in a later slide, um, focused on information sharing within staff, so making sure everybody who works here for the town knows what's going on. Um, and, and things like for morale, like the town pic picnic, our annual picnic to bring everybody together. The Montgomery Christian Church Citizens Academy is happening now. Um, we, we help run those sessions once a week. 
um, public meeting no notices and town council meeting videos that you post online. Um, and the town council recast is something kind of new where you know you notice me taking notes in the back. I recap those, recap the meetings for department heads at our staff meetings, and also post on the internet so that everybody in town that works for the town, you know, not everybody can get here on a Tuesday night, but that doesn't mean they're not interested and they don't have questions about what's going on. And that if they get asked from the public about what's going on, they they've seen what's happening in these meetings. Um, editorial support for other town departments. Every week, every day, we're working with several departments. I mean, today I worked with five different departments on the road. So kind of helping them with, whether it's an engineering capital project, helping create the external materials that will be distributed to the public, or um, flyers for aquatics or rec, um, letters, if, if public works wants to send a letter to residents on a certain street, letting them know of construction, things like that. And then branding, which is a new initiative that I'll discuss uh, later on, kind of creating a consistent approach to the town. <coughs> Here's a four-month snapshot by the number. So this is all from May of 2016. We have released 101 press releases. Um, we've garnered 89 news articles, newspaper articles, and 55 TV segments. And these are numbers specific to topics that cross my desk. So it's not just every time the town of Christiansburg was mentioned, I put it on here. It's if we were in some way involved in the the results. Um, so that's 144 pieces of coverage since May, which we're really proud of. So how do these stories originate? Um, several ways, I've mentioned press releases. That's obviously the easy way to get the word out there. Those press releases go on our website, people who are signed up for Notify Me get the notification, and we send out specific, you know, depending on what the press release is, we send out to media. Um, but we're not just doing that. Um, a big part of this job is building relationships with the journalists in the area, and something that I really um, prioritize and feel is important coming from a journalistic background. I know kind of what the journalists want when something crosses my desk. I know, you know, if it's going to be something that's very visual that might want to go to TV. If it's something that doesn't have those aspects, I can't get somebody on camera. I can't provide the B-roll, and maybe it's something I can pitch to the newspapers, and, I, and you know, I try to get to know the individual journalists too, so, you know, maybe, you know, this TV reporter over this one would be interested in this story. Um, so I'm kind of constantly thinking of things to pitch when, when I hear about things, I think about how, how I can pitch that, and also it's, um, you know, a goal is to be kind of the person that they come to. So I've had several days where I get texts at 10 a.m., like I'm sitting in a meeting, I, have, I don't have a story for today, what does the town have going on? And that goes back to trying to be that approachable source of information for people. Um, and then, you know, sometimes we just tweet our Facebook thing and we don't necessarily think, oh, that's a good pitch, and they think it's interesting, and, you know, they come to us and ask, of, ask about things that we put out there on social media. So social media by the numbers. Um, social media is another thing that I'm, you know, really working on. These numbers aren't where I want them to be, but since May, we've had an increase of either 14 or 15 percent on the town and PD Facebook pages, which are the ones that um, our department is directly responsible for. Um, you know, and, and a way that we're doing that is kind of being more visual, as you see in this background photo. Uh, this was a town council meeting right after the Pokemon Go app was released, so kind of jumping on trends. And you know, I, I tweeted that and said, a new citizen came to speak during the public hearing section. Um, and it was received really well. So kind of just being that that approachable, not to use that, overuse that word, uh, source on social media where people might be scared of you guys sitting behind this big desk and not and think it's a very formal setting, but kind of bringing it to your home, saying like we can have fun and you know you can come here, you can express your concerns to this council. Um, so even though the numbers of likes aren't where I want them, I, I am happy with how many people we're reaching on a daily basis. Every post we post gets thousands of views. Um, it reaches thousands of people, and um, our posts with the highest reach have reached, you know, 22,800 people and 31,200 people at, at PD. Um, so we'll continue working on that moving forward, working to get the, the pages verified, um, you know, those little blue or gray check marks. And I think that that, you know, it can be a kind of sticky process, but um, once you have that, it kind of shows people we're this official source of information, you should follow us, um, we'll get you important things that you need to know. Um, photos, like I said, um, public works I have here, this is an example of making sure we're reaching all departments. Um, you know, it's really easy to Facebook and tweet and Instagram about 
aquatics and parks and rec because they're always doing these really great events, but public <coughs> works is, is very visible in the town. Um, and so letting people know what's going on. And then consistency across accounts. So I mentioned that PD and uh, the town Facebook page and PD and the town Twitter page are the ones we mainly handle, but there are other accounts. There's you know, the farmer's market, there's aquatics, there's fire and rescue. Um, and they have separate administrators. We can go on there, but they generally post. So something I'm working on organizing is training across all social media administrators. So that we're consistent on how we post um, and making sure, you know, it's just it's 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 something that presents one one town image. Um, and I, I didn't mention I don't think we started a town as your energy and we have 323 followers, which is pretty good for for, for starting on Instagram. I mentioned the posts with with high reach reaching power. Um, these were the two, the one in the town was um, something that was just kind of offhandedly mentioned to me from the finance department about a woman who came in and paid another woman's utility bill, a random act of kindness, and we posted that on a Friday. It was just kind of a happy story. It got you know, more than 800 likes, uh, 22,000 people reached. Um, and the Christiansburg Police Department is a similar post. It's a, a couple who paid for a police officer's meal anonymously at a restaurant. And it was a, another thing that someone just said, like, you probably don't care about this, but this is kind of cool. This happened. You know, more than a thousand likes, tons of shares, and you can see the kind of comments that come out of this is, you know, Christiansburg, I love Christiansburg, I'm so proud of my hometown, so many great people live here, uh, thank you for sharing this story and continuing to build a caring community. So it's just kind of something we can do that's, that's, that's quick, and it creates a, people leave our page feeling positive about where they live. Um, and this kind of segues into my next section, which is on new programs, because both of those stories came out of our Communications 18 group, um, which is a group that we've created that can be department heads, but it's, it's not, it wasn't specifically, we weren't specifically inviting department heads. We were asking for someone else within each department to come and meet with us on a regular basis um, to kind of share what the department is doing that's not tied to a specific event. We know about events when they're coming up. We know we will share that information always, but you know, this is stuff that can be feature stories that can go whenever. And, you know, that was when Mark Evans in finance was there and said, well, this thing happened yesterday. Someone paid someone's utility bill, but that's not a news story. And I'm like, but it's a great social media story. And so that's kind of taught people to recognize those things, to send me photos when they see them. Um, Captain Ramsey with the police department was is in that group, and he was the one who then told me the story of the bill being paid. And then another day, sent me this photo of his Starbucks cup after he had been on vacation for two weeks. Uh, they recognized that he was back and said, you know, thank you for your service and wrote this on this cup. And so we shared that and it was another thing that, you know, people just really appreciated hearing that story. I mentioned the internet earlier, so two years kind of to internal communication. Um, this is a, it's an easy format created, you know, very simply. Um, we'll look to expand it, add additional features in the future, but we just launched it a couple weeks ago and anybody who's on the network any staff is on the network, when they pull up their Internet Explorer, this is their home page. So um, it provides town news, town council recaps, um, you know, updates. For example, one of the things when we were looking for our HR director, like people were saying, where are we in that process? Updates on things like that. Um, social news, so if you have your child selling Girl Scout cookies and you don't want to blast an email to everybody, we can put it here. It's kind of like a, a bulletin board. Um, and then like events going on that like, Check out, don't forget about Women Trail. Trail, that's on social news. Headlines, so it's a reformatted version of what I send you guys so that everybody's aware of what's going on. Um, HR policies, insurance information, benefits in information, uh, commonly requested forms, and then quick links both to like our town logo and our letterhead so you don't have to search through the public drive to find it and to other community organizations. <coughs> Um, I mentioned that I'm the FOIA officer. This year I brought in uh, the Virginia Freedom of Information Advisory Council to do a FOIA training. Um, we had 29 people from all over the region, from Tech, Bradford, other towns and counties, police department, sheriff's office, participate in this and it's something I hope to do on an annual basis. Citizens Alert. So in place of Code Red, we launched Citizens Alert um, in the end of June, beginning of July. And we now have 47,518 people we can contact via Citizens Alert all throughout Montgomery County. 
Um, so it's been really successful. We've held training sessions at the rec center to get you know senior citizens who may not have a computer or, or understand how to sign up. Um, we've been there one on one helping them sign up. Alice and Zams are thousands of minutes of calls signing people up. Everybody who works on this floor has heard her uh, signing them up for months. Um, so it's a really quick way that, you know, in case of emergency, and we can personalize the messages to people who want to know about street closures, who want to know about community events, we can send out via citizens alert. Uh, branding is a, is a great new initiative that you'll be hearing more from me on as it continues. Um, something Steve and I have talked a lot about together. Um, wayfinding and location signs, also entryway signs when you come into Christiansburg and then as you're trying to find your way around. Uh, kind of creating that consistent look um, so that when people are within town limits, they know they're within town limits. And um, it's modern and clean and, and effective. Um, along with those signs, the broader branding plan goes over things like approved fonts and colors, the new logo, how to use it, when to use it. Um, things like that. So everything we're releasing to the public, they can tell it comes from us and it looks good. But this is still in the works, so I'll show sure you back up here talking about this. And looking forward, um, a priority for me is the website. It's something that I think we could make much more visual, much more modern, much more easy to navigate, um, as well as um, you know, continue to update it on a more regular basis. There's a, there's a way to work with our back end so that we have continuous updates and we're not just finding ourselves like with this great new website and then in a couple of years thinking we need a new website again. Um, and social media, I've mentioned many times, but kind of continuing to focus on that, build our base, because that would be important when we want to reach uh, you know, a wide breadth of people in the community. We know we can go there and post things there. Um, inserting ourselves sounds like a little aggressive, but what I mean by that is you know, making sure that we're a, a recognized source in the region, that people can come to the town and um, we have experts here who can speak in engineering, you know, we have experts in, on the rescue squad, we can speak to these broader topics that aren't necessarily just about the town of Christiansburg. So making sure we're there, we're thought of when people are looking for stories that they know we have sources here. Um, and communication with, communication with residents is something, you know, continuing to find ways to reach them, whether it's a letter in the mail, whether it's social media, it's online, um, and making sure we're reaching as many people as possible. <coughs> So also, that's uh, Councilman Hubbard right there, the walk last weekend. <laughs> and it's very symbolic because we're crossing a bridge into a new territory. The slow pace you can have. <laughs> <laughs> so, questions? Well, no, let me, I'll, I'll start with that, Ms. Powell, and I'm sure I'm going to have the people follow me on this. Um, the, uh, not a day goes by that we don't get an update. Not a day goes by that we don't get an email, a phone call, or something of that nature. It keeps us in the know. I think that from a council perspective, from my perspective in the past, the concerns were that we would hear information third party at times, or that we wouldn't be able to engage the citizen if they had a question about it. I don't feel that way anymore. Frankly, I feel like I've almost got information overload to a, and to a good degree, uh, because I'm trying to process and making connections and making points. It's also very clear you have a great working relationship with our local media outlets, both print and digital. Um, I think every time that we get that email, at least in the last three or four weeks, it's had we have done this with DVD J7 or WSLS. There's all these different news outlets that obviously go to you. Um, I'm very appreciative of that. I love the updates. I know it's time out of your day that you do just for us. And I know that, uh, and, it, and it's also that in, in this line of work, I'm sure when you take your attention and put it over here, it just takes you away and you have to kind of get back, get started again. I know that it takes time out of your day to do that. I sincerely appreciate that. And I don't want it to go unnoticed. But in addition as well, um, I, uh, I've just been very appreciative that the updated information on the website Everybody, there's going to be a mistake. There's always clerical something that I do the mass and one that out a day I make a mistake in it. Uh, but uh, update, the, the, update the website. There's so much information. There's a lot. And, 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 and some of us, we look, we're trying to see if things are right. And sometimes we need to frankly just double check to make sure, to make sure citizens are made aware. I don't see those things anymore. Or if I do, it's minuscule. Um, and it's just, uh, it's obvious that you put your heart and your soul and your, your work ethic is fantastic. Again, I don't want to speak for council, but I think I can. I really appreciate the job that you're doing and keeping us informed day in and day out. So thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Hort, uh, Mr. Hoff can speak for me too, because I agree with him 100%. It's awesome to get all this stuff <clears> today. 
you've made a big <clears throat> impact, and it's hard to stand out when you're being bombarded with stuff. But three adjectives I think of when I think of Melissa already, after four short months, you're very, very professional, you're very passionate, and you're very visible. I mean, even Saturday at, at the rec center, you and your husband, and we had Terry Caldwell, Miss Caldwell was there too. Uh, but you're sold out for being here, and it shows. But I don't think it was anyone in this room that could say, could not see your passion. I had a mentor once that says, en enthusiasm trumps mediocrity. And you have enthusiasm. And, and we're fortunate to have you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a treat to have you with us. Well, Melissa, thank you. As always, reach out if you have questions. Sure. It, it, it is a real exciting time of day when I'm in my office and I'm listening to the two PR girls go back and work on their stuff and between Allison singing and answering phone calls. It, it, it's an exciting day, but we do really, I, I feel much more comfortable. I mean, and I know, I knew prior to, I knew some of the things that were going on. I had no idea. And this, this really helps when somebody says, well, what are you doing over here? And, I, and you can answer and, and not be caught off guard. So, uh, I think the last time I looked, I had 65 of your releases that I'd saved under public relations, so that's, uh, that's good. It, it, it's, it's impressive. And, and Allison, uh, I'm sorry she couldn't be here tonight. I know she had a family commitment, but uh, you know, Allison does a great job. Yeah, she's a great backer. we're a very small team, and she picks up a lot of it. So. Very, and please very, make sure she knows that I echo yeah. what I said oh, to you yeah. as well about her. And especially coming in, you know, to a new job like this, and she's been invaluable. It's all of her institutional knowledge and, and everything that she's able to do quickly and, and effectively. So. Pretty good. Okay. Thank you, guys. Anything else? Anybody? Gentlemen? Ladies? Thank you. <clears throat> Under the old business, we have the appointment to the Tourism Development Council. This is a, uh, we discussed this several months ago, and, and uh, there was a rec recommendation from Lisa Bleakley and the Tourism Group about appointing, uh, I hope I get it right, Ashish Malothra? Yes, sir. Did I get it good? Yes. He is the, uh, the general manager of Blackstone Grill, uh, and he has been recommended by the Tourism Board to replace Marie Marsh, who elected not to come back on to, uh, to the board when her, when her term ended. Uh, I will say, in doing some homework tonight, I went to the Blackstone Grill website and I and I saw 120 tourist comments about Blackstone. They were very, very positive, uh, and whether they were good or bad, uh, she answered all of them. We mailed them back to thank them for their for their their stuff. So he is probably as big a tourist draw. Uh, that we can rely on than anything around. So, how's that? The <laughs> kitchen. So, please, please stand. Yes, sir. Uh, anybody that goes to the Chamber of Commerce functions and, and things like that, he's a regular at it, and uh, I appreciate that side of the service. Thank you, sir. So, I would. Uh, I will move that we approve the appointment as uh, requested. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just reiterate the same thing, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate what you're doing for the town of Christiansburg. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your service. Absolutely. Thanks. I appreciate you being here this evening. That, that's right. <laughs> that's a, yeah. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Aye. Councilman Aye. Councilman Aye. Aye. I believe that would be 6 0. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome aboard. Thank you. We have a follow-up discussion regarding the Newer Valley Regional Water Authority and Capital Improvements Plan. Mr. Beef. Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, I want to include this on the agenda for tracking purposes, also to give you the update that in um, follow-up to the presentation, we now have the information we need in terms of our projected wholesale water costs to move forward with our own internal rate study. So we have an RFP on the streets at this time, seeking a qualified consultant to perform that rate study. Uh, the, the rate study will look at our rates over uh, future years, um, and we will seek to get an uh, assessment both of the um, need for plan improvements, the need for line extensions, continuing maintenance and repair, 
and also um, the impact of eliminating a general fund uh, fund transfer uh, to the uh, water sewer fund. Um, the <coughs> timeline that was mentioned during the uh, most recent uh, special work session that we held on this topic uh, indicated that they were going to seek some response from the members um, in the November time frame. We do not expect to have our rate study done within that time frame. That is too short of a time frame. I think in some ways the evaluation of the, the, the trend in rates and the evaluation of the need for the capital improvement, certainly at the plant, um, are, are independent. I, I think that uh, we, you know, we saw a very compelling presentation on the need to protect our water supply uh, by making investment in the plant. And so what I want to do is just one tonight, give you that status report, let you know our thinking is that uh, um, uh, you know, the, the rate study is an important thing, but it's more a budgetary tool than it is a decision-making tool. It's a planning tool. Um, and that we uh, need some instruction if you want to have another special work session to follow up to what was presented at, at the uh, last meeting. Do we need a committee meeting? Do we need a special work session? What are your expectations or need for additional information in follow-up? Mr. Biggs, if I may, I, I, the uh, committee meeting would be beneficial. A work session would be, I think, incredibly more important in my personal opinion. Uh, I think the committee meeting and having it through, basically, Steve, through Henry and I and yourself and, and Mr. Uh, uh, Wayne Nelson, mm -hmm. um, I think it would be more, uh, it would make more sense. Um, I used to use the word horse's mouth, but to kind of get it all at one time, all of us, and all of us be able to be engaged, um, that would be my recommendation to all of us that we would go for on a work session to study this instead of having us have a committee meeting, which I think invariably is going to lead to a work session anyway. But uh, that would just be my two cents on the matter. Okay. So we've got a work session where we revisit the information that was provided uh, to us at the joint meeting of the Water Authority and uh, just kind of map out a strategy for how we will evaluate, decide the decision, and communicate that decision to the authority? I think that, I think that makes perfect sense to me. But I, I don't want to speak for all the counsel. Is this still a time no. frame once we get the reports back, or is this <coughs> in the interim before the, uh, I believe before the study? A, this is a, in, in the interim. <laughs> Prior to our, our uh, questions or our decision, the day of November, they were correct. Yes, that's, that's exactly as, right. as we all know, there were some differences in the uh, Extensions. Yeah, team up. Yeah. Well, this would help us put our heads together and have all the questions that we did one time. I have a question, and maybe it's uh, not the most intelligent question, uh, but Mr. Biggs, uh, in your uh, professional experience so far, do we need a rate study? Yes. Okay. No question, but sir. Okay. Because I, re I seem to recall we've had those before. The output is basically showing us how we compare with our surrounding localities and, you know, and statewide averages and so forth. I mean, we heard some sobering news recently, and it seems like, uh, if you think we need to, then I'm the, 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 re the reason I would say that is, obviously, our wholesale cost is going to change. That is a major component of our um, uh, overall cost for service. Uh, the council is also aware from the most recent water sewer committee meeting that we have some very significant maintenance and repair, repair costs associated with info infiltration. So there are some factors there that, that I think um, it's very important for us to understand the impact on, on our revenue stream. And that's part of the rate study as well, the yes, I&I and all that? Yes. Sir. Okay. Well, then my other admonition is, is you know, uh, the joinder study uh, and we work on that and maybe be uh, cautious of that. <coughs> Thanks. Henry, Steve, anybody? Tell me, we good? All right. What we'll do is just follow up and, and, and I'll work with the engineering staff and uh, we'll try and post some potential dates for the, the, the work session. Fine. And Mr. Bees, I, I know you can't speak to this uh, and with any, with any uh, I guess, uh, certainly not dispositively, but when would you expect us to have the um, information back from the RFP in regards to the rate study uh, where we can start to digest it. Are we talking about the end of the year or? I would look for that probably in January time. Okay, January. That's still pretty aggressive though, it sounds like. It is. Mm -hmm. It is, but there was just no way we could make that Absolutely not. Absolutely. And, and I agree with you. There's no reason something this uh, 
this is a big task to, to rush into this. Uh, are we able to give a response back to the Water Authority kind of, I hate to say piecemeal, it might be the wrong term, but we're, we, I think we, we would agree, we'd all agree that the cap improvements are certainly, uh, uh, I would almost say mandated if we want to provide, again, the, the uh, service and the water to the level which we have been providing it. But the other issue that will be discuss, discussed, I guess, going forward, are we able to give a kind of, a, I hate to say a partial answer, but to give a response back, but knowing that in the future things are subject to? Right. I, I think that the, the first um, level of response is an acknowledgement of, of the need that has been yes. demonstrated to us. They also posed to us at that work session some different approaches in terms of the financing and the timeline associated or phasing associated with doing those projects. And I think that, that to give them feedback on what we think about the phasing and the financing options and that sort of thing would also be very valuable. Yes, sir. Thank you. Steve, for part of our work session, if you could find out about the phasing, if their time uh, timeline is set in stone and what they're going to do. Thank you. So, at this point, looks like November we're willing to give them a definite maybe. Is that <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Mr. Big, somebody else? Any questions or comments further on this subject? I just appreciate that RP's already out. It's already on the streets. Yeah. So, that's great. Thank you. Um, under new business, we have a discussion regarding decision to potentially lease existing off premise sign at the recreation center. Or have it removed. I believe that is the farmhouse sign. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, there is a, a sign that is an off premises sign that is there. We've been approached about the possibility of entering into a lease on that sign. Um, wanted to find out from the council one, are you amenable to a lease? Um, also, consulting with our attorney, what we've learned is that uh, five years in the term of a lease is a very important milestone. Um, if we go longer than five years, it, it, it places the item in a whole different process uh, that we think would be you know, more cumbersome and time consuming. Uh, probably not a good return on our time investment if, uh, if we were to look at doing a longer than five, five year term. So the, the first level of question that we would have for the council this evening is, are you interested in having staff enter into a negotiation with the potential party for a lease of the existing off premises sign at the rec center? And two, in, in, if the answer to that is yes, then we're going to see preliminary feedback that we would recognize that we would want it to be less than five years. Um, we, we, we just wouldn't want to invest the time it takes to go through the process to do a longer than five year term. I, I don't think that the, the payback would be there for us in terms of the difference in the market that we could market value that we could get in the sign. Do I recall it correctly that you said the sign right now is not in compliance with it is a pre-existing non-conforming sign, and I can defer either to, uh, to Randy or Andrew for the details on that, but it exists as an off-premises sign. The sign face can be changed, but the sign structure cannot be enlarged or, or modified. Okay. <clears throat> I'm absolutely in favor of uh, working with the farmhouse to, uh, to use that. I think there's a, perhaps even an implicit expectation of that because the sign is there. It is not the prettiest sign in the world. But perhaps if we do this, then maybe there will be some, you know, some uh, enhancements to that sign. But I would go on record as saying I absolutely support continuing to let them do that. And they're going to need the help out there uh, off the path to, you know, continue letting people know they're back there. But my footnote, my asterisk for that would be that I hope when we do that, that there'll be some discussions about maybe um, enhancing it somewhat. Yeah. If we were to go through the process of negotiation, then obviously it would come back to the council for approval. We really don't need a vote on the item tonight, but right. just before we entered into the time associated with that negotiation, we wanted to make sure that it was consistent with the council's expectation that it would be going that way rather than working to have the sign with it. I would concur with everything Mr. Uh, Councilman Stott said. Thank you. Here. So you know, uh, the farmhouse has been, I've been around here for 45 years, and farmhouse has been a landmark the whole time we've been here and whenever you think about Christiansburg you always think about the farmhouse and I myself am really pleased to see it being reopened and uh, the sign does need to be upgraded some and but I, I think it would be great if we can work with them as, as best we can and and uh, I'm sure that they'll eventually will come up with a amount that where they're going to have to rent it from us for and uh, I, I would just think that we should just work with them as, as, 
as well as we can and, and, and encourage them to keep going. And it's, it's going to be definitely a positive thing for the, for the town and for them. Good. I'm, actually, I'm actually been worried sick it's become it's going to become an eyesore, but it, this is just uh, wonderful. We should work with them. Okay. okay, so we got a pretty much of a head nod to go ahead. That works. Okay, thank you. Uh, discussion to schedule a council and staff strategy planning work session. Mayor, members of council, you had included in the packet just a short memorandum describing this. Uh, event, for lack of a better description, we call it our retreat. Uh, we're trying to zero in on a date for holding of that retreat. We're thinking of a Thursday-Friday uh, format. Um, in the agenda, I did reference the possibility of doing that on the 10th and the 11th of November. Um, and as an alternative fallback date, the uh, following week, uh, which I guess would be the 17th and 18th. If I could, um, yeah. and I know it, I, I'm, it's my fault. Third and fourth, I, I know I've I turned out. Fault. It is my fault, mm -hmm. and I will take responsibility for it. The tenth uh, and eleventh, absolutely, I don't have a, I don't have nothing. It's clear as a bell. The seventeenth uh, is a problem. The eighteenth is clear. But if we could do it on the tenth and eleventh, that works with your schedules. Uh, if not, I could um, always try to move. There's just one. I have a trial on the seventeenth, and that's the only thing that I have. Um, but if, if that would work with you all, the tenth and eleventh would be perfect. I think it's good to have it that early day too. If we start. Moving back, we start getting into Christmas things and, and holiday, and I, uh, I myself can support the 10th and 11th too. Right? That's, that's a good time, really. Uh, I'm, 9th and 10th, um, this thumbs up for me. I will not be in town on the 18th. That's, that's, that's Brad's fault. That's, that's Brad's fault. For the 18th. <laughs> <laughs> no, I prefer the 3rd and the 4th, my friend. <laughs> so, where, so, are we. Or the 10th and 11th, Henry, so, excuse me. The 10th and 11th? Okay. Yes, um, I don't want to taint this because we were so close, but I, 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 to be honest, um, if we do it on the 10th and 11th, we probably will not hold it at the venue we previously identified. I think there's likelihood of a conflict on the 11th. So whether we would hold it at the 10th um, and, uh, at, at Cross Point and the 11th, a different location, or just find an alternative location for the 10th and 11th, that would need to be worked out. But, but preliminarily, we think we probably have a uh, facility conflict on the left. A Myrtle Beach would be fine. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 it's our show, but it's your it's yours your meeting to play in so we'll work it out. Thank you. Very you know okay. good. Uh, consideration of a policy to schedule public hearings through adoption of the consent agenda. Um, again, Mr. Barron uh, Members of the council, you had a, a memo in your agenda packet describing a uh, suggestion that we depart from past procedures and scheduling of public hearings. Um, as I understand it, in, in the short time I've been here practice, uh, what we do in terms of scheduling of public hearings is that under the manager's report, I would just verbally list out those items that we are aware of that are subject to public hearing, and the, the council would receive those and schedule the public hearings. Uh, the vast majority of all of our public hearings are, are really very ministerial, you know, processes that are spelled out based on the submission of an application and the inevitability of holding a public hearing as part of that process. They're not discretionary. What we'd like to do with all of those items where a public hearing is just a, you know, a known and accepted part of the process that rather than kind of haphazardly report them under the manager report that we would be allowed to go ahead and include those as items on your consent agenda so that they would be approved at the front end of, for instance, the items that I'm going to report on in just a few minutes would have appeared on the consent agenda for this evening. <clears throat> if you have any questions about any public hearing item that shows on the consent agenda, obviously, you know, we can pull it off and have explanation or discussion of it. Uh, but our concern is that the in the process that we have now, things could very easily slip, fall through the cracks. Uh, it's, it's almost an unnecessary formality to, to give the report on it during the manager's report. So if we can just go ahead and put it under the um, consent agenda, I think it will help expedite the meetings and it will create for us a process that's more predictable and regular that, that we feel like we can follow. Hey, Mr. Biggs, of all the, the, what, seven years I've been on the council, I, not one time have we objected 
to a public hearing being scheduled uh, or the time or the date. And we've never objected to it, obviously. The only thing I would ask, and I think it makes perfect sense, the whole purpose was us to, you know, sometimes it was a great thing. I think maybe Councilman Stipes mentioned it a couple years ago we started doing it. It's a great time saver for things. But the only thing I would ask is that if we, for instance, tonight, if we have a, as a uh, addendum C or an item uh, subsection C under a uh, consent agenda uh, section four, is if we would just simply have the, the uh, public hearing, uh, if we have some type of language about spelled out that way it's still on the face of our agenda, yes, is the only thing I would ask for, and I think it makes perfect sense. I, I agree with some things that are just done, I don't know why we would do this at the tail end of it, but frankly, if we have it out there, it's going to make more people aware of it. No one's going to wait to the very end of council to hear about the public hearing anyway. So it, it just makes it more transparent, in my opinion. It, it's my assumption you'll have a suggested date of that hearing? Yes, sir, we'll have that. Oh, that, the whole thing? We, we will name the item right. and the date. Sure. You all already know the times, and, yeah, the dates, and that's absolutely, I don't know. We've never done that. We've never objected. No, but but then the print people are likely to be aware of it anyway. Proceed. I get the I get the feeling it's a proceed. Thank you. Great sense. Uh, under committee reports, uh, resolution supporting addition of projects and reprioritization of projects within Virginia Department of Transportation <coughs> project programming. And I think we have a separate handout on that that came across. Uh, that is, uh, came about, uh, I guess, through the MPO meeting. We changed a couple of things that we, at, at the meeting, that we would like to, for them to, to proceed on. That, that is, and if I can find it, I was at that meeting, and uh, I, I think one of the things that we wanted to do was, we talked about asking them to uh, adjust the, uh, the intersection of Flitter Street to tie it in more to... Uh, uh, I think to, to ramp the road and if we thought about it, there's there are three programs that we're going to do. One of them is, is we want to ask them to consider a left left turn lane there at uh, College Pizza Street, Pizza. Pizza, at Pizza Inn, left both ways, left left hand, an advanced left turn lane. Uh, the second is the... Uh, That's actually the item number three that you mentioned. Yeah, I, 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 I just never had <laughs> number. Yeah, and one and two are one and two are the projects along and, the yeah. street. But the original right. came from I guess staff took it to the street yeah. committee and before it went to the MPO, and basically there are four projects that are I guess proposed. With the number one priority being the North Franklin Street mm -hmm. Cambridge Street project, mm -hmm. that is yes. funded <laughs> through the HP two process last year, so. We will not be. We don't need to reapply for that. That's still approved. It's a, actually a six-year plan now. The other projects, uh, second priority would be the connector route, and we are going to apply for the entire connector route as one project. Last year we applied as two separate phases. Uh, through discussions with VDOT, we decided to basically take that down from a four-lane road to a two-lane road, at least through a portion of it, uh, before lane coming off of North Franklin Street basically to a paper, and then prior to the, the town uh, park on uh, Truman Wilson land, that it would also go back to a four-lane road a little prior to that. But ultimately be four-lane, ultimately yes. be four-lane. Yes, and it would be designed entirely for four-lane. The third project is the intersection of Main and Depot Street, and the fourth project, this is actually came through the street committee, we were considering the uh, Interchange down at Fleetwood in West Main, but through the street committee, we came up with doing the Parkway Drive extension through South Franklin Street. Oh, you're a good man. <laughs> I'll change the board. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All needed. So I think we could uh, have a motion to approve this uh, resolution. So move. Second. Have a motion on the second. Uh, any further discussion, additional comments? Uh, I would just to say that I certainly agree with that number one. <laughs> the first yeah, I, I, think, I think that they, they're very, very uh, well thought out. Absolutely. And I appreciate staff's time and effort on that. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion and a second. Madam mm -hmm. Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Tucker? Aye. Councilman Shaw? Aye. Councilman Sides? Aye. We'll be 6 0. Thank you. Uh, you stop, so I assume we'll be signing that thing pretty soon. Okay. Uh, so
staff reports. Do we have any staff reports scheduled for the month of please? Um, just a few quick items for you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I wanted to remind the council there's a public meeting on September the 15th from 5 to 7 regarding the um, exit 114 realignment. I believe that's being held at the middle school. Um, just to remind the council of the prior input or uh, position that the town has taken on that particular project, uh, we ask that they include four lanes or area for four lanes under the bridge. That would be casement pipe on both sides uh, to facilitate our future utility extension needs. Of course, that uh, we look for logo signs out on Interstate 81, and that uh, we would hope there would be lane expansion area um, on Interstate 81. Uh, the final thing is that there would be accommodation for pedestrian access along the highway there to meet the open mess. So those were our topics that we hit with them previously in correspondence. But uh, and I mentioned those nice so that when we go into that meeting, we, we have that in our mind consistently and can evaluate what they're talking about relative to what we've asked. So, uh, the aforementioned public hearings, got a bunch of them. Uh, we'll pass this note to the uh, to the clerk after. But uh, one of uh, community development block grant. Um, annual action plan. We'd like to set that public hearing for September the 27th. Um, we have a comprehensive plan amendment related to the urban development districts. We would like to hold that hearing on November the 8th. Um, we have um, vacation of public utility easements related to the Kroger property. Uh, we would like to set that hearing on October the 25th. Mr. Beef, what was that one again? I'm sorry. Uh, to vacate public <coughs> utility easements related to the Kroger expansion. And that would be the 25th of October. Uh, vacation of the portion of Stone Street related to Kroger. Uh, again, on the 25th of October. We have a conditional use permit for an exterminating service at 516 Roanoke Street in B3. We'd like to set that hearing for October the 25th. And the final one is a public hearing on lease of public facilities for communications equipment. That's the item that we reported to you last month on relative to the uh, wireless devices attached mm -hmm. to our elevator water storage tanks. And we would like to hold that hearing on September the 27th. So, but you're doing all six of public hearing. That certainly reinforces what you were asking for this evening. Right. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. we, we would have to have a booth for us to set those now. Will we do this now? Yes. Then I would move that we set the public hearing for the Community Development Block Grant on September 27th with the Comprehensive Plan Amendment on November 8th to vacate the utility easement and to vacate Stone Street, uh, vacate the Stone Street property uh, pursuant to Kroger on October 25th for both of those. The uh, CUP exterminating uh, um, CUP request for the exterminating company on 516 Bruno Street, and additionally for the public lease of um, sorry, the uh, lease of the public facilities uh, for uh, communications project on 1027. I hope I got those correct. Pretty good. Uh, close. Uh, I went over uh, the last one. I think is September 27th. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Sorry, September 27th. Yeah. I second. Uh, got a motion to second. Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Shaw? Aye. Councilman Spikes? Aye. Ruby Sixer, thank you. Anything else from your staff reports? Yes, there's other staff. I'll mention the homecoming break tomorrow night at 6 30. Yeah. yeah. It's good they're going to assemble. They'll start staging here in front of. You said it starts at 6 30? Yes. Six o'clock? Okay. And we'll, we'll start staging basically our parking lot in the county area about the top Okay. <coughs> All right. Are you judging Steve eating more pie than <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 that Steve has to eat two of those moms that they, you know, two of those <laughs> and keep it down. <laughs> Incidentally, he was a trooper at the Heritage Day with that pie contest. <laughs> My hat's off to you, sir. Glad it, you. Glad it was you this year, not me. I'm glad it'll be somebody else next year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to recommend you again. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Under uh, council reports, uh, Mr. Collins, are you? Yes, sir. I did got one thing. I went uh, the other day to the uh, public works area, and by the time I got in, to where the buildings are, about 12 screws that come out of my car. 
and I had to get the front end realigned. The road in there is terrible. Bumpy up and down. And busy that busy everybody affects, else's streets. We don't have time for it. Oh, yeah, I know. I know, but the, we need to take care of our own people too, you know. And, and oh, that affects our equipment also, you know. And plus the employees have to park up through there. It wasn't well screwed, it was just serious. <laughs> And the loose one you carry with you all the time. <laughs> Thanks. Sam? Hey, yeah, I have a concern. I have been attending the farmer's market about every Thursday, and I have a concern to think that I've seen or have not seen, and I would like for Mr. Big to set up a work session, if possible, for town council and members of the farmer's market committee <laughs> to see if we can find out what's going on. As in well, as lack in, of attendance or? Yes, they have lack of attendance and lack of vendors. Mm -hmm. Something's going on. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. We'll have a work session, see if we can narrow it down. All right, we'll get this mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, the, uh, I want to express my appreciation to uh, Town Manager Biggs, the Members of Council, and the Mayor. Um, I think we showed our solidarity again by all attending the Water Authority or as many as possible, in addition to. Um, we we worked together recently for the uh, regards to the school system and looking at uh, the Christiansburg um, uh, strand of schools and I'm very appreciative that we're doing that as a group as much as possible. I know there's a lot of other things that we have to take up our time, but I think it's important for us to do those together as much as we can. Um, I appreciate the flag downtown; it's very nice, especially in terms of uh, homecoming parade tomorrow night and the Wilderness Festival coming up on this Saturday. So there's a lot of things, and I, I call attention to that because what we saw with the um, comments from uh, Mrs. Powell's presentation earlier. You know, people are excited about being in Christian for, I think that's wonderful, speaks well of all of us. Um, the Recreation Commission that we have was the, uh, so it'll be the first Monday of, uh, of uh, September. We moved it to Tuesday because of, uh, obviously an observance of Labor Day. Uh, we had what could have been a contentious item um, that was on our agenda, probably one of the more contentious items we've had. Again, I hesitate to call it contentious. Um, Councilman uh, Showalter was present as well, but um, it's involved in the park, and there's been a determination made um, that the park is best fit, and this why I say park, for those of you in the audience, uh, it's a mini park, and it's a property that we were uh, fortunate enough to come across that we got for free. So uh, basically between six and eight thousand dollars worth of playground equipment we got for free. And a mini park is designed only to, uh, um, to allow up to about a quarter of a mile diameter, if you will, or that right is from the park, to serve, it serves those residents in those particular areas. Well, we have a location down on the John Lee Lane. It's the only area in town where we don't have a park that's designated for children. And it's just one piece of playground equipment, but there were some residents that were concerned. I'm very proud to report that uh, people showed up, people spoke. Um, it was very cordial, it was very appropriate, um, and, and there, there, there were no, um, again, nothing foul at all about it. Uh, we, there was some disagreement, but it was all done, again, very professionally. Uh, we had discussions about it. Uh, Chief um, Sisson had weighed in about um, activities at our local parks. We really tried to run down everything to make sure that we... Um, not only accommodated what the public was asking for, uh, but also that we were able to give explanations for maybe why we might be moving uh, forward, even though it was in contrast to what maybe they would like to see happen and come to them. Um, the council had a great public hearing, if you can call it a public hearing, the council had a great uh, meeting, and we did vote afterwards unanimously, um, the council, the commission, uh, to approve that property in that location. We do have a little bit of a footprint. The next meeting I'll bring in to let you all see the actual pictures of it and what it will look like, but pretty much it's too, um, it's going to be two uh, uh, painting tables, a bench, and a piece of playground equipment, and that's that's really it. Uh, but it'll also be maintained very pretty. But um, uh, again, I, I spoke with one individual who um, did, that night he actually sent me a text and asked me, "Hey, Cord, did it have to go?" And I said, "Well, we did the vote, decided to go forward on it." And I said, and "This is why." And he said, "Well, I appreciate your time, and I appreciate you all listening to us." And that was someone who disagreed, and I can't speak. That speaks very highly of that individual, and then also the process that. They understood what we were looking for and, and concerned was very good. So, again, I didn't mean to be long-winded, but it was, I was a little worried about that. Mm -hmm. And parks are, are exciting things, and mm -hmm. I, I just didn't want that to be, uh, I don't want to salad taste anybody's mouth about that, and I couldn't, the commission could not have handled themselves, nor the rest in any bad. I'm very proud to report that. That's all I have. Thank you. Just a clarification on that, that's an item for report <clears throat> on the agenda, is that what you're saying? I'm going to actually bring in some uh, visuals. For everybody, and when I say rudimentary drawings, very rudimentary that, that Brad had sketched. But I want you to see what the playground equipment actually looks like. It was pretty impressive when I saw it. I had to send a picture of it, and uh, that way you all have it in your mind as to what's uh, what to be expecting there. Thank you. 
Is that action we need to take as council? No, I don't believe so. I don't believe we have to council to take that action at all. That's part of our recreation master plan. And also, by the way, was in conformance with the master plan, which uh, a lot of over a thousand residents were responsible for being involved in. So. Okay. Thoughts. One item I'll try to be brief just to keep council informed. Um, Councilman Showalter may have, we may have mentioned this if we were going the other direction. If he did, I, I apologize. But as you know, we've had a lot of dialogue over the last six or seven years uh, with Christiansburg Institute and more recently with Christiansburg Community Center with different requests. And there's been a chasm that, can't, that we can't seem to, you know, uh, get together these groups. And, and make some meaningful progress, but <clears throat> not to belabor the issue, but Mr. Councilman Showalter and I met with uh, some representatives uh, last, I think it was Thursday, and there does seem to be some new energy and some new potential, and uh, we are, or they are working on hopefully, hopefully bringing together both groups and actually a Vice President of Virginia Tech for diversity and inclusion, and uh, there's some new ideas, and there is some new energy, but Again, I, won't, I just want to let you know that there's some more dialogue on that, and hopefully we'll be able to bring, you know, uh, hopefully there'll be something meaningful come out of this. And, and most of all, that, uh, that there'll be uh, some unity here. I uh, just have a couple things as well. Um, I did attend the uh, Red Commission meeting. It is interesting to see uh, uh, several um, of our citizens stand up against the park, but we had several that, that stand up, that uh, stood up and spoke for it. Um, it's been a long time since I've been to the recognition, so it was nice <coughs> to see all those faces. I typically see them in there playing basketball, but I just want to uh, say one more thing about it. I know several people who live on John Lindley did not show up for the meeting or in the area around there, and they were very excited about the park. So, the first thing I did before I came to the commission, um, or, or right after actually, because it was last minute uh, attendance on my part, because it was uh, I was more interested to see what was going to go on with that. But um, they are very excited about it. Uh, I just want to welcome Harry to the New River uh, Regional Commission. Uh, he attended his first meeting. Anything you want to say about that? He was very vocal. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, I really think it'll be pretty good. Hill yeah, Hill, Hill was uh, away uh, out, out of town on me, or out of town, but let me tell you, I'm really excited Christiansburg's going to be represented, represented by all three of us. It, we finally got our due in there, so definitely, you know, take what's presented to you and get involved. It's really, Ken Bird's an incredible leader, and he's a symbol of incredible staff out there. But again, the, during the commission meeting, Harry, of course, was very vocal, which is nice to see. And, and you're uh, shocked, right? Do I know? So you shocked, wasn't you? Oh, I was. Yeah. Uh, probably saw my mouth open on the other side. Yeah. You, you see where they place me, I'm at the very end. Um, but, um, you know, the one thing that we typically hear about every meeting is the rail. Uh, and Christiansburg's always met, mentioned in that conversation. And again, it always gives me pleasure when we uh, um, actually uh, put our money where our mouth is. You know, we're buying the property and things of that nature. So. I know they're excited about it, they're pushing for it, and you know, uh, I chimed in that we're excited as well, of course. Um, just with the Christenberg Institute, I think it's, uh, the meeting went very well. Um, the direction that I believe that it's going to take is, is a good one, and it's something that will benefit us down the road if both groups can get together and we find additional partners. I've always thought that the Christenberg Institute was a very important cultural item to the town of Christiansburg, and we heard Melissa talk about identity uh, about the town, and it's something that will aid us in identifying ourselves. So I have my fingers crossed that uh, there will be a partnership with this, uh, with all organizations that they're approaching, and that we can move forward with this and really make it something nice. Anything else? Nope. Mr. Tupper? I don't know, I, I might have a little optimistic uh, note here, and maybe Randy, you can help me on this, but as I was driving here tonight, it looked to me like they were just about through with the sidewalks <laughs> over there across the street from Mockingbird, is that right? It looked to me like they were almost ready to wrap up, 
And uh, you know, we have the success thing. And uh, so I, I was really pleased when I saw all that. And it does look quite good, I think. You know, so I, I think that's a good, good note there. Uh, Sam, I wanted to say I saw in the, one of the memos here that you mentioned about the sign that was over there by, I take it over there by uh, the Waffle House. And you know, I noticed that the other night myself coming in, and I was wondering where that sign came from. Um, and I would like to bring out here about the, uh, uh, the Aquatic Center is doing something that has just started today. And this is the second year that they have been involved in it. And the Lions Club is the people who are supplying the money. But every second grader in Montgomery County will get swim lessons this year paid by, by the Lions Club. That's and uh, like today, there was 100 kids there, and uh, it's every uh, Monday, uh, Monday through Thursday uh, through uh, October. And the way they have it, you get a 30-minute lesson, and then you get a, a, a lecture on water safety, and then uh, about 30 minutes for free time for the kids. And I just happened to be over there today right as they were quitting, and kids are just, you know, just loving it. And some of these kids, you know, do not get to do the swimming, and it really, uh, you know, really is a benefit. And uh, when you hear people that are drowning later on because they did not have something like this when they were kids, so I applaud the, the uh, applaud the team. And that's why I have it, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, the last time we were in council, that was actually uh, prior to the heritage, the truck, the um, um, truck. What's it called? The uh, touch truck. Touch a truck. And the gospel singing, is that correct? I, I, I want to, and I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I want to mention those three things. I had a chance to do it all three of those, and uh, what a fantastic Saturday. There's a lot going on, obviously, and I didn't realize, I just forgotten that that was actually after the fact. I saw Sam over the gospel singing, and probably saw everybody else, that, the Heritage, obviously, the Heritage Days. They were fantastic, and, and very well attended, uh, even with the weather at the gospel singing. Uh, and the touch truck must have had, I mean, there were kids were everywhere. I was like a kid in the candy store over there with my daughters, but it was a really a nice time, and I should have mentioned that. And one last thing about the Rec Commission, I'm proud to, to let all, each of you know that in um, November, we will be bringing the next batch of Rec Commission members for approval by the uh, Town Council. We have our um, student representative, male and female. The uh, young lady could not be at the last meeting because she had a volleyball match because we moved it from the Monday to the Tuesday. The young man was in attendance, and he was impressive. And I look forward, I'm just going to kind of keep things under my hat. I'm looking forward to introducing all these individuals to you all. We're doing interviews with the three individuals who uh, applied and completed the uh, application form. We're going to interview them in October. We've already reached out to them, is my understanding, to set those up. And that way we can, uh, what I call again, the usual term from Brad, to vet the process. We'll bring those to you all, though, in uh, November with recommendations. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt anything, but I, I forgot to mention that. That was important. Great assault. Great assault. Thank you. Who is one of the high school members? He is the grandson of. Well, you just let him turn your hat off. <laughs> no, he got Al Smith, so he's a great kid. It's a great kid. Impressive young man. He really was. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, again, thank you, Randy, for mentioning the homecoming parade. Uh, and uh, Mr. Biggs, thanks for the update on the public hearing on the highway department beat out bridges. It is. I've got it written five to seven in room one at Christopher Middle School. We're on 15. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, the other thing, and it, it's uh, Mr. Big circulated a, uh, a save the date on the Chamber of Commerce annual dinner, and and I'm not, you know, I think I finally decided that I'm not sure that that those save the dates always were circulated after we got them. So. Uh, it's something that Mr. Biggs and I are going to be talking about and, and the possibilities of, of having council to get more involved with the, with the chamber in these types of events. And there's some things, some issues that uh, he and I are going to get our heads with together in the morning and or the next day and, and discuss that particular event for that particular night. And it is December the 1st. Yeah, and they haven't confirmed yet. Mark Warner's going to be the guest speaker, so. But there, there's, some, there's some things that I would like, uh, he and I would like to see us become more involved uh, in the attendance of some of these. A lot of us go to their to their mixers and the chambers after hours, but this is this is their big gala, their show of the year, and uh, there's some things that we, we just don't want to get into 
uh, at this point until we got it, got it totally locked down. But we, we may be in, we will be in touch with you all by inter internet or, you know, possibly even we'll discuss it in our meeting at the beach. So, well, there's just some things you really can't. Why do they have that between Thanksgiving and Christmas? Yeah. That's terrible. You know, I, I don't disagree, and we'll talk yeah. about it. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's I'm that's fine. You know, right. it's not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm just passing this thing on. To <laughs> but, but but it is always historically that kind of. Uh, so anyway, uh, we'll we'll be in touch on that down the road. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I believe the Farmers Market Committee is going to meet very briefly tomorrow to get the thumbs up, hopefully on the. Do we want to have the Christmas on the market again this year and some other things? So, so uh, that's 5 o'clock tomorrow. All right. One final quick thing that I've uh, failed to mention in my report is that the uh, safe zones uh, effort is moving forward. We've got some drafts of some possible signs that, that, uh, that the two agencies, the, the police department and the sheriff's department, are working together to resolve and settle on. Uh, but I do want you to know that there, there is still interest and in momentum behind that that has not uh, faltered. Mr. B, there's quite a few mm -hmm. from adjacent localities that cannot wait to see how we do that All or right. how it's Good. done uh, that are hopefully going to follow suit. On other council business, we need to uh, a motion to cancel our meeting for the first uh, first scheduled meeting in October to the annual BML conference. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. All those in favor signify. Oh no, Madam Clerk, we best do that. This is a real one. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Hall. Aye. Councilman Pepper? Aye. Councilman Pelton? Aye. Councilman Sykes? Aye. <clears throat> so the 6 7 that passes. Thank you. And I am going to work on uh, a, a place that we can get together. When, when I, I will be down there Saturday uh, prior to the meeting to, uh, to for a mayor's conference. And I'll, I'm going to work with them to see if we can find a, a spot or a, a common area that we can that we can meet in for at a certain time on maybe Sunday night. So there you go. Is there anything else to come before council? We are adjourned.